Good morning. It's, a, it's an honor and a pleasure to be here before you uh, because I, as I look out across this group, I see some of the, the hardest working, most inspired volunteers of any conservation organization that I've ever been associated with. Uh, and, and the work that you do is uh, uh, not only crucial to how we do, uh, what we do across the country, but what you do as leaders and bring back to your councils and your chapters and help them uh, become able to do uh, makes the backbone of, uh, of TU uh, and, and it's, and it's uh, you, you inspire me and, and so it's great, great to be here. Uh, it's nice to be standing up at all this year. Uh, I'm, I'm here on a pair of new titanium and polycarbonate uh, knees and I uh, uh, had to take a, a, a time out uh, during the winter just to be a, 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 a guinea pig for my orthopod uh, and but I can report to you that that I'm back in the water I tested these knees in boot sucking mud and they've they've held up very well uh, now I'm in the process of trying to figure out whether or not I can design a couple of tattoos to for the for the scars on on my knees and uh, uh, to just kind of figure out whether I should you know there are vertical scars maybe I can put a, a reel on one with a fly and and uh, perhaps a, a trout on my calf or something like that um, we'll see what happens uh, but uh, to that end I thought you know what we really ought to do is have the the TU best tattoo contest and. Uh, <laughs> And uh, you know the, the guides division. We could, uh, you know, this this uh, Western guide with the stonefly nymph could uh, uh, exemplify what we're after. Uh, perhaps the uh, the uh, uh, there are there are a number here who might be uh, uh, inspired by. Oh, this this one's a little dark, but if you can see the the the, uh, the, the small fellow with the lawn lawnmower right around the edge of the. Uh, uh, foliage. Uh, I, I think we'll have awards for humor as well, uh, the regular members division. Uh, and it, it might also inspire us to in, uh, recruit more uh, folks in younger age demographics who might have uh, other inspiring ideas for, for TU tattoos. So anyway, moving, moving right along, I'm, th these slides are going to have a lot of text in them. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be brief today because Chris has already taken you on a, on a very thoughtful tour around the country uh, and very appropriately uh, gone through uh, a, a bunch of wonderful projects across the country that are uh, great examples of the cooperation of, of what can be accomplished with the co cooperation between our our grassroots uh, army of members and leaders uh, who are the face of TU in their communities uh, and the, the, the staff that, uh, that assists and, and helps them do more and more and more. Uh, what I've seen over the last several years uh, and, and what is borne out in the statistics that, that are going to follow is that we are increasing our capacity at the local level to carry out well-planned projects and, and I think one of the things that I'm excited about with this NLC meeting and this national meeting is uh, the opportunity to make a bunch of steps forward in new areas to increase the capacity to be able to carry those things out. That's sort of the, the the, the frontier that we're that we're marching toward, and we get to we get to uh, uh, create the mold as we move forward. God, if I can just uh, crush and put together metaphors in sort of a random fashion, I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, but to get to the numbers, uh, we've had uh, as as Hillary mentioned, we had uh, uh, about eight million dollars in uh, revenue generated by councils and chapters and almost 700,000 hours of volunteer time this year, uh, which comes to about a $13.7 million uh, contribution. That means that when you look at those revenues for, uh, for TU at, uh, that, are, that, are, that were about $26 million for this past year, you need to add in this 20, almost $22 million worth of additional resources that come from you. 
And, uh, and if that isn't a, a, a testament uh, to what we can do at the local level, I don't know what is. And I don't know of a, uh, another group that is able to do that with its, uh, with a, uh, its active group of volunteers like we are able to do it. Uh, and, and you can see that the trend is uh, upward on the, on the volunteer hours. Uh, and my suspicion is that we're not yet very good at capturing those volunteer hours. Uh, and and uh, you know, on, on the other hand, those of us who are who are uh, have legal experience probably could uh, uh, give you some tips on coming up with you know twice as many hours uh, in, a, in a given year. Uh, we it's it was kind of an interesting exercise this year to try and. Uh, break down those volunteer hours into uh, the the type of activities that we do as a uh, 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 in, or that we call for in our in our strategic plan, and we are doing a tremendous amount of the sustaining sort of work uh, through our educational efforts at all levels. Uh, I I find that that in our area is a uh, uh, a really strong driver of uh, some of our volunteers and our volunteer uh, activities through chapters and uh, I think it's important to us to think about um, tracking how people that we reach with our sustaining efforts, our, our trout in the classroom efforts, our, our other groups that we reach out to, uh, how those folks are going to turn around and come back and work with us as future stewards. I think the the 4-H uh, the 4 H kids and the uh, uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs and the Scouts and all those groups are, are going to be a, it's a tremendous opportunity for us to build a level of awareness about our streams that's going to result in them being allies or members or volunteers or activists or leaders in this organization in the future. And, and that's, a, that's something that we've worked to develop and I think it's a, it's a very potentially fruitful area for the organization. Uh, we have, uh, we, we did 52% of our conservation hours were put into restoration, uh, and and I think that is a that is a nice opportunity for us in many areas of the country. One of the strongest areas for us to be working in. Uh, the reconnect hours are are a little bit of a challenge uh, in some cases because, ma as many of you know who've been involved in in dam fights, uh, some of those reconnection issues are are really really grueling hours, and I, I think we ought to put a uh, a, uh, an asterisk by those because that is that is hard time uh, on the rock pile in a lot of cases. We're also seeing a, 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 a steadiness this year in volunteer hours per member uh, at about uh, at about the same level as last year. Again, I think we're losing losing hours or not not capturing hours, and I think that'll get better as we go along. Hmm? <laughs> For the people in this room, probably so. Thank you. We, another thing that, that, uh, that we need to be thinking about, especially uh, through the organizational development side of the NLC, is our uh, chapter effectiveness indexes. Uh, we've done. We've had a tremendous effort over the last several years to develop the the chapter effectiveness index and to 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 have a metric that measures what we're doing in many areas of of TU's organizational activities. How you do your communications, what your meetings are like, uh, do you have a, a strategic plan, and and, and the like. Uh, and, and what are the activities that you're doing in projects and education and, and advocacy. Uh, we've, as a result of that, we've had a, a, a strengthening of our chapters because they can measure their uh, performance from year to year and also measure it really against some suggestions from, from us about what a chapter ought to do to be a healthy all-around chapter. Uh, that led to our, our effort to recharter and decharter and merge chapters, and we're stronger as a result of that. We have fewer chapters, but we're delivering the TU uh, program to, to people more effectively. Now we're getting into a time period when we're going to be rechartering chapters again. 
Uh, and what we should be looking at is ways to take that information that we've learned over time with the, the, the effectiveness index and say what are the, where are the areas that we have many chapters who could benefit from some strengthening efforts. And councils and NL, council chairs and NLC members, you should be looking at those uh, CEIs in your state and, s and trying to determine what the trends are and what the needs are and then working, then we can work together to try and make those tools available to strengthen ourselves, uh, strengthen our chapters. So we're, we're seeing a, a slight increase in the, uh, in the CEI scores, uh, but the, the, the value is going to be uh, how chapters look at themselves and see what they need and how councils look at their chapters and say, as a, as a group, what can we do to strengthen our chapters? And then it's going to be up to the, the NLC and the volunteer operations staff to work to help make those things available in, uh, in meaningful fashion so those chapters can, can learn how to do things better. And I have to say, uh, it, it is a treat uh, to be faced with the prospect of uh, of uh, another Wisconsinite, uh, another left-hander, another lawyer, although I'm recovering from that and he's still practicing uh, mightily, uh, who, who is going to be coming on board uh, likely later today as our, uh, our new chairman of the board, John Christensen from, from Milwaukee. So uh, you, you may have a sort of a, 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 a left-handed lawyer from Wisconsin's caucus uh, but uh, th that'll be the chair and vice chair of the board for a period of time. Uh, this John is describing a, uh, a, a driftless area, brown trout 